He's the head coach of the New York Jets. He's Robert Sala, and he's nice enough to join us here on the Michael K. Show, brought to you by Slomans and Infinity.com. Coach Don LaGreca and Dan Grassa, how are you today? How are you guys doing? I've been better. I mean, obviously the rain stinks. Uh, what happened yesterday for Jet fans stinks. 13 straight years of missing the playoffs. I mean, that's not all on you. You've only been here three years, but I I'm sure you better than anybody can just feel what it's like for Jet fans today, another year in which you're thinking about next season. Yeah, no, it, it's uh, it's disappointing. We've still got three games left uh, to, to finish this thing strong and uh, um, – and uh, propel ourselves in the next year, but um, but yeah, it's, 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 yesterday was disappointing. So, who is your quarterback going to be coming up on on uh, this weekend against the Washington Commanders? You know, I'm, I'm I'll be honest, I'm not. I, I have no idea. Uh, Zach's working through the concussion protocol. Uh, obviously, Trevor Simeon's healthy, ready to go, and uh, um, then we we got Rip in the uh, uh, as our third. So we're. We're trying to figure out uh, who will be available for us, and we'll know more by Wednesday. Now, you didn't mention Aaron Rodgers. Uh, you, a decision has to be made by Wednesday. What What is your anticipation of uh, what Wednesday is going to bring, and will you have another option at quarterback come next weekend? You know, there, there's still a lot of things. That, like, like I said, it's until I until we get the clearance from the from the doctors. My assumption is that he's in rehab. Um, I'm really not having any conversations with anyone until that. So that doctors know it hits my desk. So they're uh, we're working as if he's just in rehab. Robert, yesterday after the game, Alan Lazard, you know, made some comments to the media, and he said that he felt they were out schemed and out efforted. Now, when you hear a player talk like that after a game like that, do you just think that that's immediate aftermath of the game, and that's the emotion talking, or do you put some stock to when one of your players says something like that? Uh, you're, you're. It's always a little bit of both. There's always the emotion of the game, and. Um, you know, you're 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 angry in the moment, and you make comments in the moment that uh, you may or may not want. But at the same time, it's warranted. Uh, when you lose thirty to nothing, um, everybody everybody stinks. And uh, obviously, starting starting with me and all the way down, we just we didn't coach it well enough. We didn't play it well enough. We didn't execute well enough. And uh, um, it just it wasn't good enough anywhere. So I mean, that's what's so frustrating, Coach, is that we we talked it up on Friday. You know, both the Jets and the Giants alive, coming off great wins. And, you know, the, the thing against the Houston Texans, it happened, Coach. You beat the Houston Texans. You almost beat the Kansas City Chiefs. You beat the Buffalo Bills. These things actually happened, but yet no consistency, no follow-up. Why has it been so almost impossible, Coach, for this team to be able to put a string together of decent football? Um, you know, I've got, I've got a laundry list of things, but, um, you know, obviously regardless of what it is, we've got to be better and I've got to be better. And, um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's a, it's an answer that we're all searching for. Coach, yesterday after the game, I know it, when you were meeting with the media, you made the comments about not being able to do a good enough job up front. And the offensive line had a rough day of it yesterday. Anybody that watched the game, um, is Dwayne Brown healthy enough to go out there and give you some snaps? I know that he's active, and I know that he's not 100%, but, you know, when you have the line struggling to the extent that it did, would Dwayne be able to provide any sort of a lift in that regard? Um, I, I talk with Dwayne uh, daily. Um, uh, he's fighting his tail off just to give us what he can give us when he doesn't even have to. So I, I have a genuine appreciation for him and uh, – uh, and look, if, if uh, he's, he's dressing on game day, he's giving us what he can. And, um, and if he can give us more, I know he'll always communicate and give us that uh, opportunity to do so. But uh, um, right now, I know he's giving us everything he's got. Coach, I want to double back to something you said a couple of times during this interview and that you need to do better. Can you give us examples on what you feel you need to do better as a head coach? You know, just uh, like I said, there, there's a lot of things that, from a head coaching standpoint, from scheduling to messaging to, to checking, crossing T's and dot and I's with regards to scheme and play design and all that stuff on in all three phases. And uh, and obviously, when things aren't going good, you're always going to look inward first. And so, I'm always going to look at myself first. That's a that that's a given. Um, and uh, to to make sure that we're we're going through our coaches' protocol with regards to. Um, to the to the teaching of concepts, to uh, making sure that, like I said, schedules and play counts and practice reps and uh, messaging is all on point. So anytime 
you're you're not winning uh, and you're not getting the results on the on the process that you're using, uh, you're always going to look inward to see what in the process you can change to, to to help you get the results that you want. Coach, you guys have obviously been one of the better defensive units in the last couple of years. And, you know, th this has been something that's been brought up along the way this season in regards to your scheme. And I know that the corners don't travel and you've had a lot of success. But in hindsight, you know, when Tyreek Hill's not in that game yesterday for the Dolphins, and then you know that Jalen Waddell is their number one weapon, was there any thought of maybe finding a way to double him and maybe see if you can switch sauce over to him, even though DJ Reed is very good in his own right? But he ended up being the guy who hurt you the most offensively. Was there any? chalk of maybe changing things up a little bit there uh we did in the second half um uh to to change up some of our coverages but um but look we you know it's it's not stubbornness you know it's um uh usually teams who match players are playing man coverage um there's very few teams that match players and then play zone it's a lot to ask out of a player there are teams that do that it's just not part of our philosophy and again it's not being stubborn it's it's trying to put yourself in a player's shoes to, to put him in to be successful. Uh, we've got a ton of faith in DJ. I think DJ is one of the better corners in football. And um, and so I'll still always put DJ up against anybody. And, um, you know, it's and, – and I, and I know DJ expects to win. But, uh, but at the same time, we, we could have done things better in the first half uh, as a defensive staff and from a, from a schematic standpoint. And felt like we did make the necessary adjustments uh, in the second half. They scored six points. Just it still wasn't good enough. But um, uh, it's it's definitely something that we need to be better at. All right. So you said there's still reason, to obviously, to play because you want to get better. You said you want to finish strong. What what would that look like to us, Robert? I mean, because you've got you've got uh, a winnable game against the Commanders who are struggling this year. Cleveland, my God, I don't I can't even explain what Joe Flacco is doing right now in Cleveland. It just, I'm I'm just shocked. 212 yards, you know, in the fourth quarter, and then the last game uh, against New England. So, other than just wins and losses, you know, what what will it look like for the average fan that that you're moving in the right direction? You know, just just guys going out there and fighting. You know, it's. Uh... We're on a results-oriented business, so if we win, it's guys didn't quit. If you lose, they, you know, it's whatever the narrative is for that day. But uh, um, the way we approach the week, there's going to be a lot of things that you guys don't see. Um, the way we approach meetings, the way we approach uh, uh, practice, the way we communicate with one another, the way we interact with one another. Um, you know, just seeing a, a complete buy-in from everybody, that's that's really what we're looking for. And, uh, and obviously, we'll take it to game day and, and we'll put out our best performance possible because at the end of the day, the – the idea that um, uh, I've never subscribed to the idea that players quit. You know, mm -hmm. they they understand that when they when they step inside on the field and their and their their play is being videotaped. So they are in game day and they are being taped. That is their resume. And uh, and so if a player crosses the white and they put their hand in the dirt and they get ready to play football, I promise you they are playing their absolute tails off. Sometimes it just doesn't work out mm -hmm. the way they want it to, but I promise you they're playing their tails off. Do you, do you and um, but but overall, not to cut you off, but overall, mm -hmm. just just the way we go about our business over the next three weeks, we'll, we'll, we'll speak volumes. Do you, do you feel like you're you're coaching for your job the next three weeks? No, I, I like I you know I've said it before. I'm I'm just trying to coach to to find a way to beat the Washington uh, Commanders. Robert, it's been kind of a running theme all year with the personal foul penalties with the quarterbacks and talking about the opposing quarterbacks versus your own quarterbacks. And it just doesn't seem like the Jets are getting the benefit of the doubt with those calls. And then yesterday, Zach ends up getting injured, leaving the game. And on that play where he fumbles the ball, it looked like Bradley Chubb, you know, put his full body weight on top of Zach, which is against the rules now in the NFL. And then there was even a play later on in the first half to where some defender made a glancing blow and it got Zach in the helmet, where in some cases they're going to throw a flag on that play. Did you guys get any follow-up from the NFL on either one of those two calls yesterday? Uh, we, we've sent all those in. We, we usually don't get uh, communication until Thursday. All right, so just to reboot uh, the quarterback situation, you said, so if Zach clears protocol, he's your starting quarterback against the commanders. Cool. Correct. And you said you, don't, you won't know until he's cleared what the Aaron Rodgers situation is. And I know you don't deal in hypotheticals. We've dealt with each other long enough for me to be able to know that. But Wednesday, you're going to get, whether he's cleared or not. So what, what is the, your anticipation if he's ready to go what does that conversation look like, Aaron Rodgers moving forward, if he is cleared by the doctors to be able to play? 
You know, I, I, I'll tell you this, and it's, I, I don't think I'm really saying any secrets to anyone. I, I know Aaron has been fighting his tail off to get back. He wants to play. Um, he's willing to play even if he's not even 100%. And, uh, and he, is, he is fighting like mad to get onto the football field. And, um, and like I said, when we get that doctor's note, we'll have that discussion. But, uh, but I do know so I, I, I will speak for him and that his desire to play is, is high. But, Robert, along those lines, and again, it's a hypothetical possibly, but do you think that Aaron at this stage of not playing football for three months and your most mobile and elusive quarterback couldn't finish the game yesterday, can Aaron go out there and protect himself behind this offensive line right now? Um, shoot, he's, he's a Hall of Famer. I'm, I'm sure he'd be able to figure it out. <laughs> I, I, I'm just I'm going to give it a shot. What do you want to say? <laughs> Do you want to see him play this year? Um, look, I, you know what? It's um, I think it's extremely unfortunate with everything that's uh, transpired, and we can deal with hypotheticals. We can deal about the future. We can deal with what could have been. But but honestly, um, whoever's available on Sunday uh, or really Wednesday uh, is who we're going to coach our tails off for, and uh, um, and we're going to do everything we can to try to win a football game. Good luck, Coach. We'll talk to you next week. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. All right, that's Robert Sala. I mean, he's just not going to answer it. You know, and, but it's there to be answered. He just won't do it. You know, Wednesday, we're going to get definitive word on whether he is active to play or done. Or is it a situation like I, I brought up, you, you know, for example, like with Dwayne Brown. They activated Dwayne Brown, but he's still not starting. He no. comes in every so often. You, so do you activate Rodgers and then he's just... Well, kind of there right but then that, that's why i asked him come wednesday you may find out you have another alternative and then he said well we'll find out when when that day comes so you know he doesn't want to answer he doesn't want to deal on the hypothetical but the hypothetical is going to become reality he may be cleared to play on wednesday don't have to start him mm -hmm. but he'll either be inactive or active for the rest of the season so it'll then become whose decision woody's decision aaron's decision joe salas uh salas robert salas decision i mean somebody Joe Douglas, throw out anybody. They're going to have to decide. And he continues to kick the answer down the, the, down the road. He's going to have to answer it come Wednesday. But you know what the problem is, Don? With three games left in the season, and given all the other problems that they have on that side of the ball, are any of these options, including Aaron Rodgers, a really perfect option no. for the remainder of 2023? Well, no, no. And that's the problem. And, I, and, and that's the problem. That's why I asked him, what's best for the Jets? What does he want to see happen? Because I could, I could get, I don't know if anything is good for the Jets to have Aaron Rodgers start, other, other than maybe just making the game this weekend a little bit more interesting. But does Look, it, help, it, it doesn't help Aaron to go out there and possibly get hurt with a dysfunctional offensive line in a meaningless game. The only thing it helps is Aaron Rodgers and everything he's done to get back on the field. And I think that's probably worth something to him. But for the Jets, just, just to get out of Dodge, maybe evaluate Wilson uh, a little bit more. Maybe get something down on film where you could possibly trade him or make a decision down the road. That's what's best for the Jets. Well, from a box office standpoint, too, and I know it's only one game, but look, it's Christmas Eve. On Sunday, you're going to have two teams both eliminated from playoff contention. If you are even a fringe football fan or a fringe Jet fan and you're thinking about maybe going to that game on Sunday, if you find out Aaron Rodgers is the starting quarterback versus, let's say, Trevor Simeon or anybody huh. else, will you be maybe a little bit more inclined to trek out to MetLife Stadium and go to the game? And that's what's scary because I'm sure Woody Johnson would say, yeah, I want him to start. Let's make this meaningless game with 20,000 people in the building something meaningful with 80,000 people and getting attention. But I don't know if Robert Sala wants that. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, going to do what oh, we do course. on Sunday? Of course it'll be more exciting oh. having Aaron Rodgers playing. However, if I take a step back from what's good for me and my job, do I think that it's the best decision long-term for the Jets? I don't know, but that's not my call. No, but the thing is, and we can't figure it out, whose call ultimately will it be? Is it Robert's call? Is it Joe's call? Is it Woody's call? Is it Aaron's call? I mean, everything's a collective with the Jets, right? But let's be honest. They all sit down in a room. He's cleared to play Wednesday. What are they going to do?